afternoon, everyone. Uh, we are uh, heading back to the Middle East, heading to Israel, uh, heading to Jordan, with three principal goals in mind. First, uh, to talk to uh, the Israeli government about the ongoing campaign against the Hamas terrorist organization. As uh, we've said from the start, Israel has not only the right but the obligation to defend itself and also to take steps to try to make sure that this never happens again. We've also said very clearly and repeatedly that how Israel does this matters. Uh, we will focus as well on steps that need to be taken uh, to protect civilians who are in a crossfire of, of Hamas's making. Uh, and we want to look at concrete steps that can be taken to better protect them. Uh, we've seen in recent days Palestinian civilians continue to bear the brunt of this, uh, this action. Uh, and it's important that the United States is committed to making sure everything possible is done to protect civilians. Um, at the same time, we're determined that this conflict not spread, and we'll be talking to both uh, the Israeli government and partners in the region uh, about what all of us are doing to prevent that from happening. The second big objective, of course, is to continue our efforts to get humanitarian assistance in uh, and to get our citizens and nationals out uh, of Gaza. In terms of humanitarian assistance going in, uh, we've been able to establish over the last couple of weeks um, efforts to get trucks moving. We've had about 50 to 60 trucks a day of assistance going in. We need that and want that to increase, and I expect you'll see that uh, in the coming days. At the same time, we've been working to make sure that our nationals and other foreign nationals can get out. And over the last two days, you've seen Americans and, and their families begin to come out of Gaza. Uh, and we expect that to continue over the coming days. This has been uh, a very deliberate effort on our part, working with uh, other countries to make sure we could get passage out for our citizens and citizens from other countries. Uh, of course, we're intensely focused every single day on the hostages and taking every possible step that we can uh, in concert with others uh, to secure their release. Third and finally, uh, we will be talking about how we can set the conditions for a durable, sustainable peace, durable, sustainable security for Israelis and Palestinians alike. Um, we're focused on the day of. We also uh, ha need to be focused on the day after. And so in conversations that uh, we'll be having through the course of this, this weekend, uh, I expect you'll see a, a focus there and particularly how we can get uh, over time to two states for two peoples, which in our judgment remains the best guarantor and maybe the only guarantor of a secure Jewish and democratic Israel and uh, Palestinians with the state uh, that they're entitled to. So these will be the, uh, the things that we're focused on. Um, these are challenging times. Um, these are intensely difficult issues. But I am convinced that American diplomacy can make a difference in moving everyone to a better place. That's what we'll be working to do. Have to take questions. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Do you assess that Israel has shown restraint up to this point in their offensive in Gaza? And what are the concrete steps you'll be pushing them on? And are you confident that you'll actually be able to get them to make any movement on this, given the maximalist positions we've seen from Israel? Well, as we've said, and it's, and it's important, uh, Israel has the right and the obligation to defend itself. And again, to try to make sure that what happened never happens again. No country, no country, not the United States, not anyone else that I can think of, would tolerate uh, the slaughter of its civilians. So we stand behind that, uh, and we stand behind the proposition. But as democracies, uh, the United States, Israel, other democracies, have a responsibility to do everything possible to protect civilians who may be caught in, in harm's way. And this, again, is a, is, is a crossfire, quite literally, of Hamas's making. The fact that it cynically and monstrously, deliberately, has people, uh, men, women, and children, as human shields, um, puts, uh, puts its uh, command posts, puts its leadership, puts its fighters, puts its weapons, puts its munitions underneath hospitals or even inside them, schools, mosques, makes this incredibly challenging. But we have to rise to that responsibility. And so we will be talking about concrete steps uh, that can and should be taken to minimize harm to men, women, and children uh, in, uh, in Gaza. 
Uh, and this is something that the United States is committed to. I'm not going to get into the, the details here, but it's very much uh, on the agenda. When I see a Palestinian child, a boy, a girl, pulled from the rubble of a collapsed building, that hits me in the gut as much as seeing a child in Israel or anywhere else. Uh, so this is something that we have an obligation uh, to respond to, and we will. Thank you. Um, I wonder if you could get your assessment of the, the current risk of the spillover in the conflict. Uh, today, Hezbollah has said they've attacked 19 posts along Israel's border with Lebanon. Uh, the Houthis said the other day they're entering the conflict. Uh, and just secondly, while you're in the region, uh, how do you expect to be able to get other countries in the region involved in uh, sort of the, the day after plan that you're talking about when uh, you know there's rising opposition, rising protests against Israel from we've seen Bahrain and Jordanians pull out their ambassadors? So we are determined to prevent escalation on, on any of these fronts, whether it's um, Lebanon, northern Israel, southern Lebanon, uh, whether it's the West Bank, whether it's anywhere else in the region. And the president's been very clear in, in what he said publicly. We've been very clear in what we've shared privately. We've been very clear in some of the actions we're taking that we are determined to deter uh, any escalation. So uh, with our partners um, as well, we're making sure that that message gets through. It's not in anyone's interest not in anyone's interest for this to escalate. And I think some of the uh, other parties involved actually recognize that. But we're going to work on that every single day. Do you assess that that's, that's happening, though, if these strikes are already, already taking place? Uh, what we've seen so far uh, are yet discrete uh, attacks. We've responded as, uh, as necessary, including on our forces, uh, our forces who are in the region, in Syria and Iraq, uh, to prevent the resurgence of, of ISIL, which also should be in everyone's interest. And you saw the actions that we took in response to that. But as I said, we're determined to uh, prevent escalation, to prevent the spread of this conflict, uh, and we're taking the uh, necessary steps to try to make sure that that happens. With regard to, um, uh, to what comes next, again, I think, understandably, people are very focused on the day of, uh, not just the, uh, the day after. But we do have to have conversations now about how we can best set the conditions for a durable, sustainable peace, durable, sustainable security for Israelis and Palestinians alike. Uh, so I expect that uh, those are conversations that we'll have an opportunity to pursue uh, over the next couple of days. But uh, this is a, a long-term effort, but we have to make sure that we're focused on it now. Thanks. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Oops, sorry, sorry. Can someone send me? Yeah, yeah, got it.